Would you believe it? I've got a bonus. I could buy the latest threads, maybe have a flutter on the chariots. No, 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 I should save it, I should save it. Maybe for a nice long holiday in Gaul. Oh, but with today's saving rates being so low and those pesky bankers, so don't trust putting my cash in their hands. Yeah, I know. I'll bury it right here and then remember exactly where it is. Beneath our feet lies hundreds of centuries of our ancestors' history. So how hard can it be? I mean, I've got all the gear and some big ideas about finding the next valuable hoard. Oh. Huh. Maybe I do need a few tips. What do you do? Nice and close to the ground? Nice and close to the ground, nice and slow. Listen very carefully to the tones. High tones are good, low tones are, are not so good. So, so, so really high pitch is what, gold? Really high, well, it actually is, isn't it? It's, it's in, in the mid-range. Oh, right, gold, OK. So, uh, but yeah. generally high is good. High, high is good. Keep your coil moving over the top of the target okay. once you locate. Lawrence Edgerton's dedication to detecting finally paid off. To talk me through, your big find. I found a couple of small Roman coins, um, which is unusual for a Devon field. Dug down about 12 inches, and uh, the next shovelful was just completely coins. You're kidding, so suddenly coins erupt. Uh, coins, coins all around the whole absolutely amazing moment. Oh my God, are there more? <laughs> I, I um, phoned my wife uh, to try and contact uh, the authorities and the landowner to let, let them know I stumbled upon something. Wow. Quite special. How did you safeguard the site? It is a worry driving away from something that's potentially fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I, I decided that I'd, I'd stay there that night in the car. You stayed in the car that I night? Was, I'm not really built for sleeping in cars. There must be a sense, though, that there's a bit of money in it. For me, it's not a, a money-driven hobby. It's, it's just the artefacts and the history. It, it's, you know, it's fantastic. And, and this hoard, to me, is 22,000 pieces of history. It's, it's amazing. Lawrence reported his finds as treasure and the coins are currently being valued. Tom Cadbury at the Royal Albert Memorial Museum in Exeter has offered to show me some of them. Tom, this is incredible. Just how many coins are there here? We've got 1,000 coins here. The other 21,000 and a bit are still in the British Museum. So tell me about dates. How old would these coins be? From about 318 AD through to 341 AD. They're made out of bronze. So a tiny little bit of silver in them, but they would have been used by everybody, you know, in general circulation. It's so rare to find this many of them. So that's the significance, to find 22,000 together. Yeah, so this would have been a, maybe a year's salary for a, a government official, you know. I think it much more likely that it was in an office, say. These were the, the coins used to pay off the agricultural workers for some reason, you know, things got a bit tricky and they decided to bury them in a hole in the ground instead. For Lawrence, for any other metal detectorist, just how significant is this find? You know, so few of these hoards found in Europe. You know, this is one of the biggest ever found. To be honest, I think treasure hunting might require a bit more patience and dedication than I've got. But I suppose the thrill of it is, you just never know when you might strike it lucky. That's oh, the thing, isn't it? You yeah. never know. I used to be obsessed when I was little. My grandfather had one. Beep, beep, oh, beep, yes. beep. Um, so we've been joined by Mackenzie. Lovely to see you. Welcome Thank to you. The One Show. Um, now, you have written and directed a series for BBC Four, which starts tomorrow night, yes. um, called The Detectorists, which is a term you've sort of made up. I mean, it sounds... Well, no, that's what they call themselves. I mean, they're, they're, metal det uh, they're, they're not metal detectors, because that's the machine. Yes, they're, of course. They're, they call themselves metal so detectors. Well, it's a, good, it's a good word. Yeah. It's a good word. But what came first for you then? Was it the project or was it an interest you had in it? And that's why you went on to, to write it. I've, I've always been fascinated by it. I do think it's an intriguing pastime. Mm. Um, I, and I, when I was a kid, I, I wanted to get a metal detector. I hounded my mum and dad for it and never got one. Um, and then, yeah, I, was, uh, I watched an episode of Time Team a few years back, which had a couple of these metal detectorists on, and it, and it just struck me as a... I mean, they were very obsessed by their hobby. They, they completely mm -hmm. immersed themselves in it, and I thought it was probably a, a rich vein of comedy. And so when you, when you started doing it yourself, did you, did you find anything exciting? I took my first metal detector out of its box, turned it on, and with five, within five minutes I'd found a silver sixpence, a Victorian silver sixpence. It was as if someone had planted it there to get me interested. Really? In and since then, nothing. And that, you just... Yeah. <laughs> nothing <It's>, since? Nothing. <laughs> well, you know, shotgun, a couple of buckles, a musket ball. <laughs> the thing is that well, I bought these, I'm probably not a very good one, but they seem to beep at almost anything, like not treasure. 
They right, just, yes. I mean, the, the more you spend on a metal detector, then, mm. you know, they discriminate between different metals so you can cut out the iron stuff. Yeah. Judy, does this world appear to you at all? Of metal detector, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. No. Think so. yeah. well, well, this might entice you. Let's yes. have a look at uh, Mackenzie's uh, new comedy. Here we go. Honestly, I bet you'd be amazed at the things you've missed because you've been locked in your own little world, staring at the floor. Rubbish. <laughs> It's an excellent clip, isn't it? It sort of sums it all up. But you were saying that you needed to learn um, nearly a new language because they've got so much jargon, these detectorists, that you had to sort of incorporate that in your script. Is that right? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I couldn't put too much of that in for, for the viewers that, that don't know about metal mm -hmm. detecting. But, but yeah, as with any pastime or hobby that, that people yeah, get obsessed by, they, they make up their own language and, and there's various terms that you, you know... Go on, give us a few examples. Well, uh, th these are hammies. Uh, the, I mean, they're Roman coins, but hammy is a, a hammered coin. Okay. And, um, that was the old-fashioned way of producing coins. Can slaw is one of my favourite. That's drinks cans that have been shredded by farm machinery. Yeah, great. Oh, that's okay. in coleslaw. Yeah, 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 yeah. can slaw. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So, what actually happens then in this comedy? Because it's not a documentary about metal detecting, is it? No, it's a, it's a story of these two middle-aged guys and their their lives and relationships, but set against the background of this hobby that they escape to on a weekend. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, they just enjoy each other's company and talk rubbish out in the field. <laughs> Sounds good. I can't wait to see it. The Detectorists yeah. on BBC Four tomorrow night at 10pm. Now, you have been sending in your pictures.